Okay, thank you. Um, our last prepared question is on thinking global, acting local. Uh, we had a touch of this yesterday in the, the discussion about um, whether we should engage as a group with the post-2015 MDG What Next agenda. So the, the question is, to what extent should thinking global, acting local be a priority for think tanks in developing countries? And what conditions and support are nece necessary for them to, to do this? And I guess that the, 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 the backdrop of the question is that sometimes the, a sense of this push to not only work nationally, but also internationally or regionally or globally, um, smacks of being driven by, by a donor's sense of the globalized world, not always a, a think tank sense. So is that an issue? Um, I guess this is a, a question for think tanks. So, <coughs> Shaker, would you like, like to kick, kick with that one? And then I'll come on to a donor. I frankly don't think it's an issue at all. Uh, but that could be just my personal perspective or, or, or what I'm uh, projecting in the sense of what I know from my colleagues at my own institution. Um, and that may be also peculiar to India, given its size and its rising uh, emergence in various fora. Um, so I've been struggling to think about why that would be an issue. Um, and it may go to what was said just now, that if it reduces the ability of the think tank uh, to be in the driver's seat, and it is dancing to a tune that really is not important for its own national credibility, then I think it's an issue. But if indeed the global issue that is being addressed, whether it's rebalancing, G20, foreign direct investment, uh, the impact of the financial crisis, the mess in the Eurozone, um, if they're going to impact the domestic economy in a big way, certainly there can be no question about the validity of uh, being in that space, being active, promoting dialogue, even domestic dialogue and debate. Um, so I, I actually don't think that's, that's an issue at all. But I did want to turn that question around a little bit and again go back to and link it up with your first question, which is about the legitimacy of this kind of funding for think tanks in emerging mm -hmm. um, economies. And there I think as a group and individually, we should be thinking of ways in which we can inform the citizenry of your countries. So in your case, the UK, the Canadian uh, IDRC, and in the context of those people who Bill Gates listens to or the Hewlett Foundation listens to. I think we should be projecting what we are doing in effective ways so that we influence your constituency, your constituency, your parliamentarians, your citizens, uh, your press, your media, your opposition. The, 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 the members of the opposition. And I think we need to be reaching out to them as well in whatever way is possible for us. And the TTI should be thinking in this globalized world, the TTI secretariat itself should be thinking of ways in which that can be facilitated. Because just as much as we need to influence our domestic constituencies, we need to be influencing the international constituency that makes it possible for donors to come together and make these risky investments. And I think that's in our own interest to do. So I want to turn it around and put it in that framework. Mm. Thank you. So Stefan, as a citizen of Europe and a policymaker in a European country, are you being influenced by sudden think tanks? Um, uh, yes is the correct answer. Uh, <laughs> Politically correct or intellectually correct? <laughs> the question is how. No, there's, 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 there's definitely a lot of, of influencing there. Um, I just still want to, you know, the, the, fr f seeing it from a donor perspective, the, the extent of influencing, of course, could be much more. Um, but I'm going to implicitly contradict myself now in my answer. So I'd, as, as, as you see it, you know, it, you know, the power of think tanks of shaping ideas globally would be quite tremendous. But personally, I would be deeply disappointed if a group like this were to be able to come up with 10 things they all agreed on. Because I think one of the strengths of think tanks, really, in all spaces, is the contestation of ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think the power really comes from the contestation, not just from the idea in itself, I think. And so um, engaging with global, global issues is quite important. 
but creating other advocacy platforms, I would find personally, just intellectually, rather disappointing in, in, in that sense. And I think it's finding this way of engaging with global debates and having different ideas on the table and, and improving the quality of debate is much more important than actually having a shared view, bringing it to the table. Now, coming back to when I said I was going to contradict myself quite dramatically, of course, it's extremely difficult then for saying, seen from a European donor perspective, to, or to actually know how to absorb this. And I think that's, that's one of these, these issues. We, if, if there's too many ideas, then maybe you give opportunities to pick and choose. But, but I would still emphasize that the quality of debate is, 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 is something that is really important. And that's definitely a contribution that certain think tanks should start making. I thought I would give an example of... Please do, Jean. Yeah, I'd like to give an example of how we, you know, global experiences influence some of our work. And that with, was with uh, you know, the preparation of the Petroleum Revenue Management Bill. Ghana you know, discovered oil in large quantities in 2007, but it was not until 2009 that you know, the reality hit us. And in undertaking the research, we relied heavily on the experiences of Norway. And we came up with research. And among the findings or the key recommendations, we, we asked government to consider setting up a heritage fund that was a fund to cushion, you know, to set aside money for future generations. And I think that was taken on board in, in the research. We also recommended that government set up a public interest accountability committee, also borrowing from Norway's experience to have this public oversight body to manage and oversee the management of the revenues flowing from the oil sector. And all of this we're taking on board. So in some cases, it's good to rely on the global experiences, especially if they are relevant to our country. Thank you very much. I think um, uh, <laughs> very briefly, because we, 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 we... No, the, very, uh, very briefly. I just wanted to, to build on uh, what Professor Wang told us on Monday. Okay? Just like within the, our, uh, the local scene, you want policies that are informed by research. Even at the global scene, Okay? You want a debate that is informed by, by some research. People are taking, countries are taking strategic positions. Regions are taking strategic, uh, strategic positions. And you want that to be informed by, uh, by, by research. So some of the think tanks must get involved in that, uh, in that process. It's not coming up with a, a think tanks agreeing on just one mm. thing, but... Uh, contributing to that process so that those representatives of ours, be it in the G8, be it in the G20, be it in the WTO, are informed by some research. I think that's the objective. Okay.